losing your credibility as well too. When when you start throwing the money into it and the greed gets involved, you know, when you lose the passion for it, you no know, one can take you seriously. And that's you know it's the same thing with facts too. Who's behind it? Who's your source? How much did they pay you to put that out there? And, and that's another thing with conspiracy. You know, it's it's you can't you don't know what what you're taking you know legit. You don't know what's what. You don't know who's being truthful to what. Who's not being bribed? Who's got an ultimative? Uh, an ultimatum. Um, and you know, it's just one thing with me and rich, we're just doing it for the fun of it. And, you know, we try our hard to find the best facts we can and make sure that we're trying to be as honest and truthful with each other as we are ourselves. Because if you're just out there making a fool of yourself, it's going to be exposed. Like every other of these shows have been. Well, you know, like, I'll be honest with you. I had a major network come up to me a few months ago and they offered me a large amount of money, uh, to come on their network to do what I'm doing. But, uh, well, it, it, it kind of didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And uh, I'm not going to get into the, one of the reasons why I didn't do it. But it would have put me on over 100 and some radio stations immediately. But the, wow. some, the, the, some of the things was, well, I on call-ins, I wouldn't do the screening. So when I take call-ins in, I, I take them in and, you know, I got a dump button. So if I don't like what they're saying, I dump them off the air right off the bat. But I don't take screen calls. The, everything would had to be screened. I couldn't pick the guests. They would pick the guests. So basically, all I'm going to be doing is, okay, here's the guest you're interviewing tonight. Ask them these questions. Well, you know what? It, so you, it, it didn't work. Out. Just the voice. Yeah. So you could offer me over $100,000 a year to a show. If it's not what I want to do, yeah. I'd rather starve to death. But I'm fortunately, I'm retired. I don't really need the extra money. Uh, well, I guess any, everybody can use extra money. But, you know, I, I do my show. It's like you guys. It, it's fun. And the day it's not fun is the day I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the yeah, when you lose the passion for it, go ahead, buddy. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say it's 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 very easy to to have a lot of respect for you to make a decision like that because you know you don't want to be just a voice for you know some network you want to you know create your show control your show and you know that's to me it's, it's very respectable because you know hey a lot of people would have taken that deal. Well, I, I thought about it. You know, I ride Harleys, and I'm really, I've been into motorcycles for years. They, they were to the point where they offered to fly up the vice president of this corporation, which is one of the biggest corporation, entertainment corporations out there. They offered to uh, take me into the local Harley shop, and they said I could pick out any Harley. Uh, yeah. I was really tempted, okay? Uh, <laughs> but my one son, you know, helped me get this show going on the website. Uh, side of it and all that stuff he told me don't do it don't do it you know and i you know i'll be honest with you for a couple of days i kept thinking wow that's a lot of money for doing a four hour a night show and you know but yeah. then i started realizing this isn't going to be fun anymore so if i have to come back and do a show as an employee and do something i'm not happy with it wouldn't work out yeah yeah at least now yeah 100 percent at least now, like I do have a couple of stations that's going to come on board. I'm working with about with 20 more, and then I'm going to keep working with more. And, you know, I don't make anything, uh, you know, having them on. Where I make my money is my, off my advertising. You know, somebody advertises on my show. I don't make it if the radio station carries it. But, you know, I, I want to get my show out there, and, you know, that's what I'm working on. But I want under, under my my uh, my way, not somebody else's way. But I think once you once you get to that point where, you know, other people are controlling your show, how can it ever be what you really truly want it to be? You know, I, it, you just you lose that you lose that creative control. You lose that ability to, you know, change something on the fly because you're not liking the way something's going. You know, I, you got to be happy. That's ultimately, you know, the biggest thing is you got to be happy. Well, I think so. You know, and. You know, I, I'm not really into what you guys do. I'm more on the paranormal side. But, you know, we take it like on UFOs. We kind of research, you know, I, you know, I, I make it interesting when we do stuff on UFOs. In fact, we're going to be June. I think I got like 10 shows on 
some very noted people in the UFO field will be on. And the same with Bigfoot and then, you know, some ghost hunter groups, you know, and I, I just want to make it interesting for the, you know, the audience mm-hmm. out there that listens to it. can kind of sit back after a hard day at work and relax and enjoy the show one way or the other. Either they like it or they don't like it. I mean, you know, but I don't want to fake it. Well, exactly. That's that's what me and Bobby always say. We start off the show saying, you know, everybody have a drink, take a shot. We're going to have some fun tonight. And, and you may not agree with us, but, hey, we're going to have some fun tonight. Kale and Shannon ended up taking like four or five shots. But... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. One thing I'm going to warn you guys, audio is very uh, important nowadays. Audio quality. Yeah. So, you know, you might consider if you make any changes in the show, audio quality is the most important thing because you could have a great show, but if you don't have, you know, really good audio, that's going to turn a lot of people away. I think some people yeah. even listen to my show because the, the, I, I, I get so many emails and texts every day about how good the audio quality of my show is compared to a lot of other shows. Hey, they don't realize, though, I spent almost... I think like $18,000 for all my equipment here uh, to make it sound like it is. I mean, that's a lot of money. I could have gone out and bought another motorcycle. Yeah, we got rubber bands and duct tape and then suit cans, and we think it's it's working pretty good right now, you know, but once we uh, once we start getting moving along a little better, I think we'll definitely be invested in some, some proper, some good stuff. So, no, Rich has got a great setup down uh down over at his house and you know that's primarily where we do the show we go out uh, out of rich's house and um he's got a nice little setup over there and you know it, it's nice being around the table and just all of us around there talking and we do have the occasional uh, uh rain fart or the shot spills or you know we knock something over there's some interference and you know like we said we're, we're getting started with this stuff and we're really you know we've come so far along just in the last couple months that we're doing it. And uh, we know that we definitely have a couple issues from here and there just with some audio quality stuff, but just because we're some big dummies, you know, we're, we're just some regular guys that, you know, have passion for paranormal stuff and, and oddities in the world. And, we decided that we want to have some drinks and talk about it. Sometimes we just have a little too many drinks. <laughs> well, I've done, I actually, I've, I, you know, I, I, oh, I think we just lost one of you guys. Uh, I've actually had that happen with me where, you know, uh, all of a sudden my wife will, or one of my sons will say, here's a a dark beer. I'm a cheap alcoholic. I get drunk on one beer, you know, and, and, uh, you know, uh, what, what'll happen is I'll drink that one beer and all of a sudden I'm making no sense on my end. So I really feel sorry for the guest (laughs) if, if I do drink that beer, you know? (laughs) <laughs> You're right if we're already talking out but but yeah so but then sometimes i'll be honest with you i need that beer just to deal with that guest oh 100 yeah, percent. that's that's, that's, that's uh, most i gotta time, have a shot just most to go time. over to rich's house sometimes <laughs> it's most of the time i'm drinking because i'm looking at bobby during so yeah, right. i was waiting for it i was waiting for it <laughs> well have you, you i take it you guys haven't had much in gas yet but have you had anybody on as a guest that you kind of like were totally amazed like uh oh my god type of amazed you know i mean to be completely honest with you um no i i, I mean i don't think so personally because Right now, most of the show has been like the four of us. We haven't really had a lot of guests on, to be honest. Um, we've had, I've had some, you know, friends of the paranormal that have come on. And I guess what I could say is there's been times where we have had some of, some paranormal people that I knew um, learning about them and learning more about their beliefs in the paranormal did open my eyes to maybe how sincere some of these some of these friends that I have are. Um so I guess I can say yes to that. I mean we we have a paranormal group from Utah that, you know, comes on our show and they're they're very sincere on what they do. We've had a Bigfoot hunter um that I was I was really blown away at just how much time spent in the woods, he he went and did like he did a whole Appalachian mountain climb where he was out in the woods for 
four months or five months. And I had no idea that, you know, some of these Bigfoot hunters, that that's exactly what they did, that they went out that long and left their job and, and, you know, we're really out documenting all of this. And, and I guess for me, you know, yeah, that was a big eye opener. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people it, it take it serious. And like I mentioned, I've had a couple ghost hunting groups on, right? Their idea is they would go to a old house or old tavern or somebody's house and spend two, three hours and say, oh, there's nothing there and leave. It, yeah. it, you know, those are the people that really, I hate to say it, uh, again, damage uh, anything to do with the paranormal because they're doing it more as a social gathering point rather than you know taking it really serious or or they're just accidentally mm-hmm. hoping to run across something yeah you know and and you know so like a, a group we've had on paranormal disorder out of utah they're very very professional very serious um when we've had them on we've really i i've left that show thinking wow um you know i i knew things about these guys but i didn't know just how Seriously, they took it. Um, you know, I, I know an ITC developer in the paranormal community, and it's a very hot topic of, you know, his ITC applications real, like they say. Um, his name's Dave Miller, and the amount of hours that I've talked to him about how much time he puts into developing, you know, these these ITC applications, you you end up leaving your show thinking, you know, the, wow, I can't believe for people who aren't really making any money to be, you know, devoting that much time to something they love. It's, 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 it's really, it's, it's really cool to see because like you said, there are a lot of people who two hours in a place, they Facebook live themselves and then they walk away claiming that they're a, you know, a, a big paranormal investigator. I know. But that, when you can find those real people, that's where you really have respect for the field. Well, you know what I hate, and I got into it on uh, on on somebody that posts stuff up on Facebook. They're going out uh, and looking for Bigfoot, and they're showing the little video, you know, Facebook Live, and they're walking on a trail that you can tell the trail probably a hundred people or more a day walk <laughs> on that trail, right? You know, <laughs> and they're trying to, you know, run into a Bigfoot. And I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, when I did it and my friend did it, we were out in, like I said, the Canadian Rockies, way out in the middle of nowhere. And it was just purely accidental. I mean, we weren't even looking for a Bigfoot. We just wanted to take pictures of what was left of the internment camp and the silver mines and the old cemetery and all that stuff where they buried the Chinese, you know, workers of the, the mines and stuff. That's what we were doing. And when we ran into the Bigfoot, I mean, that scared, you know, what out of me. So, but after yeah. seeing one, I can tell really fast when somebody tells me they want to be on the show and they describe, well, they saw a Bigfoot. If it doesn't match anywhere near what I saw, then I, I know they're, you know, they're, uh, imagine it and i'm sorry there's people mm-hmm. out there that actually you know like you mentioned earlier they want it to be uh famous for a few minutes even if it, if they're not telling the truth yeah yeah and and that's unfortunate but you know that that, that the whole social media it, it's given people that that platform and you know i mean you go on facebook live and film yourself for two minutes and then you walk away thinking you're a celebrity but in the meantime, you're not you're not doing what you're there to do, and and it, you know it, even when I go to you know some of these um, ghost hunts where it may be a public event, there's a hundred people there. There's no way you're gonna you, you can really you know get down to business and, and document anything. But yet, eighty of them are on Facebook Live. They're all posting you know oh my God I've I've been touched. There's demons in here and then they go up, they, they log off, they go home, and then they have a following. Oh, yeah. And that that's alarming, you know? I mean, I've seen that so many times, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, like, I, I hate to say it, ghost boxes. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I do have that type of electronic background behind me. 
you know, you're basically modifying some type of radio, AM, FM, or what have you, just to scan the frequencies really fast, you know? 